You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 23rd, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance headquarters, where we still remember that there was going to be a wall and that Mexico was going to pay for it. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. I hate to swear at the beginning of the podcast, Drift Glass. I do too, especially after we've been chided so... (laughs) So forcefully by those fuckheads who don't like, oh, I'm sorry. I see I did it right there by some no, very. I um, wasn't going to call anyone a name. I was just going to say, what a fucking week. Oh, God. Yeah. And yeah. the lunatic, the lunatic in the White House. I think, uh, you know, we have we have learned in this uh, administration to say the word lie, to yep. say the word racist. Yes. And now it's time to learn the word lunatic. Yes, it's it's as almost as if I don't I don't want, don't want to say this, you know, out loud just so that anybody can hear it. It's almost like liberals have been right about the right all oh, along. Gee. And for years and decades and decades and and now that everything we warned was happening is literally knocking at the front door of the mainstream media and of the never trumpers and of the Republican party. Everyone's like, "Jesus, when did all this happen? What 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 happened in the night?" What happened to all my beautiful Republican Party ideas? And it is more important now than ever that we liberals hang on to our superpower, which is memory. Mm-hmm. That's why we mentioned the wall at the beginning of the podcast. And, of course, the beautiful new health care system is going to be cost us pennies. A fraction be much of the more cost. Expensive. Right. A fraction of the cost and cover everyone. Right. And we're never going to touch Medicaid. We're never going to touch Medicare. We're never going to touch Social Security. And it's going to be beautiful and great and strong and powerful and of course, everyone who voted for this idiot has completely forgotten every bit of this, mm-hmm. and it will re- and it will remain forgotten until he they're prompted at some fucking rally, and then they'll scream about it for ten minutes, and then they'll go home and jerk off to Guns and Ammo magazine and forget that it ever happened. Meanwhile, the rest of us, just like happened during the last Republican administration, will be stuck cleaning up the mess. I I actually want to start the podcast by praising CNN and Chris Soliza of all people. Oh my god! For now, for now, one thing, they did. I have to lay down now, so you go <laughs> ahead. I have some I have some drinking to do, and uh, you go right ahead and do your thing. So go right ahead. Uh, go go praise. I will pray. I'm going to praise them and damn them at the same time. Um, okay. Last night on Thursday, CNN uh, did a segment with Chris Soliza in which he remembered the past. Mm. He remembered that Ted Cruz used to call Donald Trump dangerous, that Lindsey Graham used to call Donald Trump a racist. Right. And political expediency led them to be total hypocrites. And he showed film of them saying Donald Trump's terrible and then pointed out that they're now in his camp and they're total and complete toadies for Trump. Because mm-hmm. and he said because the Republican base loves Trump. Okay, so yes, good for him. <laughs> Stopping right there, that would be just great. Yeah. Glad you did it. That'd be great. And and again, he also showed uh, that everybody knew Trump knew that Trump was unqualified to be president. The exit poll for November 2016 showed that mm-hmm. the vast majority of voters thought Donald Trump was unqualified to be president. Yes. Yes. And this None is, of this is this new is, information. You know, it right. was herd immunity. He didn't say that, but that's right. what it was. People throwing away their vote, white people and misogynists right. and and people who didn't want to vote for Hillary just decided to throw right. away their vote on Trump as a joke or as a protest or because, whatever. Because Hillary's gonna someone win. Else, right? Someone else would, would do the hard work of cleaning up the mess. And there were enough of those people in this country. If Chris Saliza had stopped there with, and here's here's right. a exit poll from 2016 showing we all knew this, we all knew he was unqualified, mm-hmm. uh, that would be great. But he decided mm-hmm. to insert, you know, unlike Jeb Bush and Paul Ryan, uh, Donald uh, Trump really isn't a Republican. He really isn't a conservative. Uh, uh, see that little headache <laughs> that was right behind my eye that went away for a minute? That's back to the vengeance now. Yeah. 
really yeah. not a well, Republican you know, in that mold. You know, a, the Jeb Bush Republicans. Republican, he's no. really not that. No. And uh, it's yeah, the lifeboat. I it's they're building that sense of there will be a Republican Party after Trump that is never has never been touched by Donald Trump yeah. at all. Well, the, the the working title for our podcast this week is that Republican lifeboat building is the one economic sector that is 100% recession-proof. Recession proof, stock market proof. It will never. <laughs> doesn't matter. It will never go away. It will never go away. Um, from and, and, you know, it's like you fall asleep to Chris Eliza and you wake up to Joe Scarborough saying, you know, Donald Trump's not really a Republican. He's not. He's a Democrat. He's a Democrat. You know, he's a Democrat. And there's no one hitting him in the head with yeah. a board until he stops doing that, because the, the power of television is surrounding yourself with enough fucking sycophants and spouses in this case who will never contradict this idiot when he right. says things like this. But the core message of people like this is that this isn't really the Republican Party. And Donald Trump isn't really a Republican. There's some fucking imaginary Republican Party out there that still exists, that will still come along, that will still save the day. And that's what we, those are the people we should be talking to. We should be curious about these weird people in the country who who go out to Trump rallies. And we'll dispatch our our ethnologists out there to talk to them. They won't, we won't talk to their victims. We won't talk to the liberals who've been right about everything. But we will talk to the 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 idiots the truck drivers and the farmers who voted for this guy and the coal miners and find out what's on their mind. What what are they thinking about? What's going on with them? We can tell you that. Come to our house. We can tell you all <laughs> about what they're thinking because they fucking live next to us. Right. And we'll tell you that they're never going to recover from this addiction that they have and that there is no other Republican Party and that Donald Trump is very much a Republican who beat all the Republican nominees in the Republican primary to win the Republican nomination. And he did it by using the vocabulary that Republicans have been taught to use for the last 30 years by Fox News and, and Hate, Hate Radio, Radio and Newt exactly. Gingrich. And exactly. that is something that Chris Saliza, until his dying day, is never going to admit, which is why Chris Saliza will always have a job. Because talking about this stuff in front of a big microphone with a big audience is an absolute guarantee of career suicide. And Chris Saliza is all about keeping Chris Saliza's career alive and well. Right. And I, I have noticed this week, because I've been forced to watch Fox News for work. For work, yes. The way in which Fox News brainwashes their audience is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And it is to use one exotic word over and over again, mm. just like a hypnotist would do. Right. right. So it's Benghazi or right. Solyndra or Solyndra. Tarmac. Some unusual word that will mm -hmm. generate a guttural reaction, emotional reaction from the audience when they have they couldn't find Benghazi on a map. They don't know what Solyndra made. They don't know the story behind the tarmac yeah. or what no. what's really involved with it. They know tarmac uh, bad. Tarmac bad. Yeah, and and now we have Antifa right. <laughs> or Antifa right. or however right. you want to say it. And right. California is now one that is right. over and over again becoming this mantra of America will become California. You wish. You wish America. You became. wish. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that Chris Saliza ignores Fox News <laughs> in his argument are ignores the Republican primaries and how Donald Trump won the primaries, even though he is mm -hmm. using footage from Ted Cruz. Right. During the primaries, you know, that is that is his story that he's telling is the primary story. He doesn't talk about how Donald Trump got more Republican votes in the Republican primaries nope. from nope. Republicans than no. any other Republican in history, because that does not fit into his narrative. He doesn't talk about how the Republican propaganda arm called yeah. Fox News got behind Donald Trump and pushed and right pushed away. and yeah. pushed. Yeah. And all of which is known. And But these are all things that involve um, spreading the blame around, right. laying the blame where it actually belongs. Mm -hmm. And that is something that they can't afford to do because once you, uh, I, the first topic I wanted to talk about today was our national political bifurcated political trial. Hmm. And a bifurcated trial is where you have a, a, a guilt phase where you decide whether or not the person is guilty and, and who is responsible for what and what got damaged. And the second phase is the penalty phase where the jury decides what penalty or damages to impose. And the reason our politics is fucked is because 
we have no problem assigning guilt in this case. We know who's to blame for this, just as we knew who was to blame during the Bush administration. It was very clear that Don, that Bush had enablers, that Cheney had enablers in the media, that there were just tons of people who rolled over for him, from his speechwriters to his friends in the media, to the people in his cabinet, to the corrupt people he surrounded him with, that the Bush administration was a catastrophe. That was the guilt phase. When it came to the penalty phase, the media decided, nope, there'll be no penalty for any of this. We're going to give all of his speechwriters a job. <laughs> We're going to give all of his press secretaries a job. And anyone asks, what the hell are you doing? Aren't we going to talk about what just happened? It's, nope, nope, it's over. Bush administration's over. Let's not talk about that now. We're going to talk about it anymore. Let's talk about why Barack Obama can't lead. Yeah, well, and they That's did that with Nixon about. too. This is not new. No, this is right. old. This is ancient. And it's been going on forever. And this is what's going to happen next time. Just, just as a matter of note, just a moment ago on the Twitter, mm -hmm. someone asked me, how long has Dan Rather been turning into you, Drift Glass? <laughs> and because Dan Rather <laughs> on the Twitter, asking abstractedly of no one in particular, um, Dan Rather says, whatever happens, don't let anyone get away with saying that the chaos, ineptitude, cruelty, and corruption of the Trump presidency were unknowable. All of it was entirely predictable and indeed predicted by many. Of course. I mean, the, the catastrophe that was the Bush administration was entirely predictable and predicted by all kinds of people. As it was happening, before it happened, after it happened, after he was reelected, everything we said was going to happen, happened. And what happened to the people who were most guilty is they were all given promotions. And it's high time we recognize that the one thing that Donald Trump got right is the media in this country is absolutely broken. It will never hold accountable the people who need to be held accountable because the people who are being referees in this case, the people who are in the media are too tight, are too cuddly with the people in power. They care about their relationships to power. They do not give a shit about you or me or the democracy that makes their institution possible. And that's the catastrophe. That's what's going to happen after Trump is brought down by an impeachment or being voted out of office or whatever. They're going to do exactly what they did after the Bush administration. They're going to bury it all, pretend it never happened, say, who cares? It's over now. Let's move on. And the Republicans will go back to sabotaging anything Democrats try to do to fix it. And and Chuck Todd will sit there going, well, you know, isn't it both sides? Mm -hmm. Isn't it really both sides? Isn't it? Why are the Democrats in disarray? Why, why won't President Sanders lead? And, and unless very serious consequences begin to be inflicted on the people who control the media, this is never going to stop. We have had feedback from our listeners mm -hmm. uh, that we do a little bit too much pundit bashing. We do. <laughs> and we, we do. do. Uh, and so I want to take some time out to talk about how to act local and how to make a difference because all of us need to make a difference. We all can make a difference and, mm -hmm. and there are ways to do it. And I know that a great many of our listeners are doing this already. Yes, um, they are. And I'm so grateful for the work that all of you are doing. Uh, but someone did suggest to me this week, you know, what can we do? And so I tweeted, what you can do is find a Republican close by and defeat them. Yeah, <laughs> that, it, that start and, there. And, you know, start start, if you mm -hmm. have a Republican congressman, you've got a lot of work to do between now and 2020. If you've still got a yes, Republican congressman in as we do after 2018, mm -hmm. uh, it's time to get to work because it is a larger electorate during a presidential election. You can get college students out more likely. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you and can. it's it's time to get to work on that. Find the opponent to your Republican congressman, as we have with Betsy Dirksen Londrigan. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, get to work for that campaign. Uh, if you have uh, a Republican senator, God bless you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who's running for re-election. Uh, Mitch McConnell in Kentucky. You Kentuckians have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, Amy McGrath is doing a great job. Her ad, I just saw a new ad she did on coal country that was fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. There's uh, his popularity is down, and but that doesn't mean he can't by this election. He's done it before. Uh, so there are uh, things to do in the Senate as well. And then, of course, presidential race, pick a candidate, support them, vote blue no matter who in the general. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's also, I mean, um, there are local ballot initiatives. Yes. If there's something in your community that needs doing, 
Um, one of the best times to rally people to that cause is when you're getting, uh, there, there are actually two schools of thought. I just literally just had this conversation with someone about a local ballot initiative that we're trying to, you know, work out the details about more about which later. Um, but it was one school of thought says you want to get a lot of people out there who are enthusiastic and, and, and want to vote for it and put your ballot initiative over the top. The other school of thought says, no, you want as few voters as possible because then each vote counts for more than if you have a whole bunch of people out there. I happen to believe in the rallying power of a good cause. So I'm a great believer in getting ballot initiatives that you want passed on your local uh, slate and your local ballot during a presidential election year. This is this this is the strategy that Karl Rove used in mm -hmm. 2004 to get mm -hmm. Bush reelected. Mm -hmm. Karl Rove went out to all the swing states where there are a whole bunch of frothing at the mouth, Bible thumping, hate science hating evangelicals, and put gay bashing, anti gay marriage um, ballot initiatives on all the ballots, thus guaranteeing that the worst people in America would turn out to vote for his candidate. Well, and there's no and reason why. Frankly, there were a lot of black evangelicals who turned out to vote because of that as well. And we're yes. told to oh, a I, church because yep. they didn't like gay people until Barack Obama said they should. And yes. uh, yeah, that, and that worked for him in it Bush's reelection campaign. It works. So what in your local area, what local issue like clean water, mm -hmm. like clean air, like good schools, can you put on the local ballots that'll get people to the polls who are favorably disposed to your political position? Because there's a whole lot of people out there um, I cannot imagine being one, uh, but I, I used to be one when I was in my 20s who just looked at politics and shrugged and went, you know what, you know what, eh, whatever. It doesn't really, because it doesn't affect me. And and find something that, that really does matter to your local community. Mm -hmm. Get it on the ballot. Um, and you'd be amazed. Uh, the number of signatures required here to get something on the ballot is like 10% of the local turnout from the last election. Local last election turnout in, in Springfield is 25,000, which is pathetic. So if you want to get any ballot initiative on any ballot in Springfield, you need 2,500 signatures. Wow. That's which, not very many, can, believe it no, or not. No, it's not. That's the thing. It, it low, low ballot turnout in a lot of communities means it's easier to get things on the ballot because it's a percentage of the last turnout. Mm -hmm. So it just as a strategy and also as a way of getting good government. Um, your local city council, you want to talk about that for a little bit? Well, you're the one that goes to city council meetings. So why don't you I talk do. about it? <laughs> well, it's your, your local council, whatever it is, your alderman or your selectman or whoever they are, uh, is where the action really is probably in your local community. Right now, in our town, the fate of a new health and transitional housing center is in the hands of a zoning commission. Actually, it was passed out of the zoning commission. And that is a very small committee that has a huge influence on the lives of people around you. And enough people rallied to that cause and enough people made their voices heard in Springfield that it got passed out of the zoning commission and will be voted on by the alderman. Now, in, in our town, there's 10 aldermen, all of whom fight among each other and all of whom fight with the mayor, which means basically you need six votes in this town to get anything done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Six votes is not a lot, especially when you're dealing with aldermen. Alderman's a part-time job. Right. <laughs> alderman lives down the block from you. Absolutely. Yep. And, and they live down the block from you. And they, at least, ex exactly. In a smaller town like this, you can really make a difference by just putting the pressure on a handful of people in a handful of places. And it's also great political practice. Um, I watched a really good ballot initiative go down in flames last year mm -hmm. because the people who were pushing it had no idea how to whip a vote, how to, how to, how to contact, how to take them out to lunch, how to, how to make their case to them privately, just had, had no idea how to do basic politics. And so this perfectly wonderful initiative they thought would go through because of its just virtuousness died. And it didn't need to. Um, I hope it comes back and I hope they, they learn from it. But Well, it was because it's one alderman said, well, what about this? And they didn't right. have an answer. Right. So and then, when you boom, when down, yeah, down. because they weren't prepared. So right. that that happens. Right. Well, and they weren't prepared for the woman who opposed it and goes from town to town opposing initiatives like this to show up and be oh, loud nasty. and, and yep. cranky. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's a controversy. And and the minute it becomes a controversy, honestly, They're done. most of our local elected officials just hide their Run heads. Away. I don't want to Run involved. away. Better to do nothing can't, than actually can't just, do something that might help. Right. Can't we just pass resolutions appreciating the local baseball team? Because <laughs> that's really all I want to do. That's really all I want to yeah, do. Yeah. Uh, but it is a it is, it is is the pressure point of politics. You go find the place where the the – most amount of pressure applied to the smallest number of people can get the most things done. And usually it's your local government. And you and that's and the reason is that's the farm team for national politics. You know, 
uh, uh, Rodney Davis wouldn't exist as a congressman if Rodney Davis weren't the bundler and, and staff guy for the last crappy right, congressman. Right, exactly. Yep. And these people come from the school boards and they come from the aldermanic community and they come from somewhere. So this is the farm team for the future leaders of America. And you can you can absolutely persuade them and get involved with them and get them on your on your side with a minimum of effort um, and just bring coffee and donuts and they'll love you forever. Speaking as a woman, Drift Class. Uh, and a patriot. And a, patri and a, a mother, mother and, and a patriot, patriot and a woman. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's an awful lot of traitors on my side of the uh, gender equation, including Judith Regan. Yeah. Uh, you guys may not know who Judith Regan is. Uh, she was the woman who tried to publish If I Did It by O.J. Simpson. Yes. Uh, a truly terrible person yeah. and uh, in terms of her career. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's the one that offered Mark Halpern a book deal, mm -hmm. found a book deal for Mark Halpern. Mm -hmm. Oh, and before that. Yeah. She was, um, I promised I wouldn't call her Bernie Carrick's ground zero fuck buddy. So oh, I'm not going to do that. Was. But she was. When yeah. Bernie Carrick decided to commandeer the um, apartment that was being used by, by first responders to, to relax and recover from uh, cleaning the pile. Mm -hmm. Decided that he would use that as his personal love nest to cheat on his wife. The person he cheated on his wife with at the Ground Zero apartment was Judith Regan. Wow. So she's just a horrible person, has always been a horrible person, which is why she will never be unemployed in our current political environment. Apparently, she's always going to make money off of terrible, terrible book deals. And yes, she will. Uh, there were a number of other women that were willing to be interviewed about the 2020, you know, way to win. His, his standard election book has to come out. Uh, in spite of uh, all of the bad things that he did uh, mm -hmm. in the workplace. And I asked you the other day, you know, what is it about you are at work? Yeah. That pe people and men in particular, mostly men, just don't get. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, not just the sexual harassment and it was the trading off of sexual favors for job advancement and telling a woman she'll never work in this town again mm -hmm. because she rejected his advances and then being violent toward a woman in a restaurant. Right. Uh, these are things that are credible accusations. In the meantime, Mark Halpern doesn't deserve a book deal. Mark Halpern is just a human stool sample. And he's one of those people who is, in the club. Consequently, because he is both in the club, in the Beltway Media Insider Club, and is completely without merit as a human being. He is, his reporting is terrible. His presentation is robotic. He will always find the fault with the Democrat. He will always find the positive thing about to say about Republicans. He's the guy who, who was, the only time I've seen him like really thrilled is when Donald Trump gave him a helicopter ride. And he was so excited mm -hmm. to be on Donald Trump's helicopter. And he's such an obviously unqualified political stooge for Republicans. That's that should have been disqualifying. He was terrible before he decided to rub his genitals on a coworker. And this is the way back in. He interviewed uh, seventy-five Democratic operatives, every one of whom should have hung up on him. But he he got David Axelrod, who at this point doesn't really give a shit. He just wants to know that you know whoever he invites to his charity is going to come with a big checkbook, so he doesn't give a damn. Donna Brazil who's off collecting her 30 pieces of silver at Fox News, talking about how both sides are bad. Just, just awful vultures. people, awful vultures. hacks and yep. vultures and has-beens, and just people don't give a shit anymore. They live in Washington. Washington is a separate planet. What happens in Washington doesn't affect anyone outside and vice versa. And Halpern just ground at him and ground at him. And I have, I have been through this before. Do you mind if I tell that story? Sure. It's, it's, a, it's a professional story where me and this guy knew we were up for the same job. Um, I was uniquely qualified for this position. And when he says um, uniquely, I, he means the only person that understood the project for which this position had been created right. was you. Literally, 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 I was the only person who had been there from the beginning, who helped design the database, who helped design the protocols. Everyone had moved when out of state, was not in the office anymore, was right. not applying for the job. You were the only no, person associated with the project was applying right. for the position Been there since the beginning yep. 
They'd gotten rid of the 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 uh, consultants they'd hired because they were corrupt and were ripping the place off and said, we have to find someone to run this thing. Who is best qualified for this job? And it was me and another guy I worked with. And the other guy I worked with worked 50 feet away from me. And his job regarding this particular process was to give me two numbers every month. And every month he fucked it up because he didn't know how numbers work and didn't know how spreadsheets work. <laughs> <laughs> and this was a this was a numerical driven, data driven database system that he absolutely was wildly unqualified to perform. So I applied for the job with my expertise in hand, with my resume in hand, my decade of experience. I was on the design team for this fucking thing. I knew it inside and out. I knew how to sell it to every other department in the, in the city of Chicago. That's where I was. This guy went to everybody he'd ever gotten drunk, everyone he'd ever gotten laid, everyone he'd ever done favors for, any alderman he knew, any commissioners he knew and said, you owe me, you fucking owe me. I need this job. I need you to call the chief of staff and tell them they need to hire me. Mm -hmm. Guess who got the job? Did you ever follow up to find out what happened to that project after he was hired? Uh, it, I assume it crashed and burned. I, well, there were a I, lot of projects. Yeah, Your department doesn't exist anymore. No, right? my department doesn't so, exist anymore. The administrative district in which my department existed doesn't exist anymore. My favorite quote by Mark Twain, if I may indulge sure. myself, <laughs> is I joined the Confederate Army, served for six weeks. I, I quit and the South fell. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, none, of the, none of this exists anymore in any map anywhere. Um, but the, ups the upshot being is you, you have to understand that that really is how a lot of the world works. A lot of it does work on merit, and that's a good thing. But way too much of it, especially what goes on in the media, has nothing to do with merit. It mm -hmm. has to do with Mark Halperin building connections and making and making friends and doing favors for people, giving them positive coverage, giving them glowing coverage, telling them how it's going to be great for them, pitching their bullshit ideas on Meet the Press. And when when the, the dry season comes, him working the phones and working his Rolodex and saying, you owe me. Mm -hmm. Get me a goddamn book deal. Get me some goddamn interviews. And you know what? That's how people like that stay in the media forever and ever and mm -hmm. ever, leaving mm -hmm. the rest of us utterly bewildered because – this is not how they are presented to the world. They're presented as experts. They're presented as knowledgeable people who are, who are subject matter experts who we can trust. And way too many of them, Joe Scarborough for one, Chris Eliza for one, David Brooks is my sort of you know, go-to guy. But there's a million of them who are, who are simply unqualified, wildly unqualified for the jobs they have. And yet these are the gatekeepers who control what we talk about in our political conversation. As in, as in Grand Bargain. As in grand bargain, you know, once this storm passes, expect everyone to demand of President Sanders or President um, uh, Warren. They're going to make the deficit their number one priority or else. Deficits have to be solved. And it'll be exactly like to do with Clinton, exactly like to do with Obama. The next guy's next man or woman's going to have exactly the same problem with exactly the same people pitching exactly the same thing. And this time, this time I will vote for the first candidate who promises to grab Chuck Todd by his tiny little head and keep screaming into his face, where the fuck have you been for the last eight years? Yeah. In yeah. his face until his eyes bleed. Yeah. Until he crawls away into a corner, curls up into a ball and cries himself to sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear any more of these people in the media who created this problem, treated with any respect anymore at all by Democrats. This is why Beto O'Rourke was a hero of mine. Right. For <laughs> saying, he, he, fuck. What is and, that? What's and, that question? Yes. And honestly, this is why we do focus on the media because they really are the gatekeepers. They're the ones who control what is an acceptable level of, of discourse in our country. And they and they reassure Republican politicians that it's perfectly okay to be like this because we will cover for you. At the local level, too. I mean, at the local level, terrible things happen, glorious things happen where you can have a whole lot more influence. I'd like to just reiterate that the the sex crimes and violence against women crimes of Mark Halperin are mm -hmm. worse than the crimes against truth and fair journalism. Absolutely. So I'm I don't want it to come out that you know it was only in it was only after he did these bad things that we punished right. him for the less bad things because really what he did was a crime against right the workplace and against women and that's that's the bad thing that it is, he does deserve to lose his job over doing a crappy job as a right wing hack that's it god damn it that's in his job description you know right. and, personnel appreciates is, that so th 
this is the Fox News model, mm-hmm. which is it didn't matter that Bill O'Reilly was a monster right. who got uh, Dr. Tiller killed. Right. It didn't matter that Roger Ailes created a, a fascist state, a lie factory, polluted our political discourse, killed it for the next generation, and turned Fox News into a sex predator petting zoo. Mm-hmm. Until they got caught attacking women, right. preying on women, sexually assaulting women, they were immune from everything. Right. Everyone was willing to lie about them. And, and after they got caught, what happened? We'll just write a big check. Yep. We'll write a big check and we'll, we'll give you $40 million and you'll go away. Are you going to go to jail? Or are, is Fox News going to shut down? Is the is the beast you've created going to collapse because of you? Oh, of course not. It's a money making operation. And the, right. the average viewer of Fox News doesn't remember any of that. Doesn't remember no, Bill no. O'Reilly existing. No. Glenn Beck, no, who? You know? Uh, yeah. yeah, until he returns. They'll remember him positively when he comes back. Remember that guy? He had such good ideas. And he had a big chalkboard and pretty glasses and he said funny things. Gosh, whatever right. happened to that guy? 60 uh, seconds on the local event that's coming up. <laughs> uh, the local event is being sponsored by our state drone register. Uh, they said they're excited to announce the Outdoor Expo. Uh, which is coming in September. The Outdoor Expo is going to be uh, headlined by America's number one outdoor guy. He's a vocal pro hunting voice. He's America's number one outdoor outdoors role model. Mm-hmm. It's Ted fucking Nugent. Ted fucking Nugent, which if you didn't know, Ted Nugent has 1,000 <laughs> reasons for never being allowed to sponsor anything. First of all, he poaches when he hunts. He bait hunts. He does all the things that hunters themselves hate. Uh, he's on the board of the National Rifle Association, but he's also a member of the crackpot uh, splinter group that thinks that the National Rifle Association is too weak on things. He has threatened to murder Barack Obama. He's told Hillary Clinton that he's going to shove a rifle up her nether regions and blow her head off. He has verbally threatened to kill lots of people without smiling. Right. He has taken the side. He is a he is a domestic terrorist who makes all kinds of insane threats, and people just shrug it off because, hey, what are you going to well, do? And, he's and there's good a on TV, and now he's got a hunting show. He's got he a, a TV show on cable mm-hmm. because apparently, there once your name is out there, you have unlimited access to your own cable show. And and here's but you, but here's what you don't have automatically. You don't have the local paper sponsoring right, you that's to come in and be the number one celebrity headliner for their what they hope to be an inaugural event at the largest venue in Springfield, a seventy seven thousand seat auditorium, smack downtown. You don't have the editor of the local paper, the new who's also the ad guy. So this makes perfect sense now. Um, writing a ten paragraph article. Nine paragraphs of which are devoted to glowing references to how what a wonderful person Ted Nugent is and how amazing it's going to be that he's going to come to town. That's the sort of thing that locally you Mm -hmm. can make people sweat over. You can make them hurt over that. Why are you bringing this fascist to my town? This guy who threatened to kill the president of the United States, threatened to kill Hillary Clinton. Why are you bringing this guy to town to to headline this goddamn event? You're the if if you were. If you were a fascist organization, I could understand it. He fits right in with you. You are the local newspaper. You are the oldest newspaper in Illinois. Why are you doing this? And I would love to hear someone answer that question. That is an example of a local thing that you can do in your community to make your local fascist organization sweat. And by the way, Drew Class will be asking that question of certain people at the State Journal Register, but he knows. I will. I absolutely will. All right. Report back to us when you uh, find out I, more. I certainly will. <laughs> We're going to do a news roundup now, but the first half of the news roundup is pretty much about Donald Trump hereby ordering that the economy be a certain way. Yes. Absolute communist. Uh, all the things that Mark Levin calls Barack Obama. Right. Right. Is summed up in a tweet by Donald Trump. Our great American companies are hereby ordered to immediately start looking for an alternative to China. Uh-huh. And uh, this morning, the the white guys on CNBC uh-huh. just lost it. It yeah. finally, there was a tipping point of that is the stupidest. He One of the 
the investors on the panel said, that is the stupidest idea I've ever heard in my entire life. You're going right. to tell Boeing not to sell airplanes to China. You're going to tell General Motors not to sell cars in China, in right. the largest in the largest market on the planet, 15% of international GDP. Uh, it's a stupid idea. And then the other, the other white guy on CNBC said, all of the volatility in the market is entirely due to the president of the United States. Yes. Entirely because of him. Our, our friend um, uh, Tengrain over at Mock Paper Scissors has, yeah. the, <laughs> has the best headline of all, local communists seizes means of production. Exactly. And that that's is, it. And it, not only is he te- ordering U.S. companies not to sell to China, he's, he's also ordering car companies not to sell to California. Right. Because right. They, they, because California has has uh, has offended the dear leader by suggesting that we're going to have some laws here involving uh, emission control and pollution like and states, carbon, right? <laughs> and we don't want your stinky vehicles that pollute our beautiful environment sold here anymore. So we're going to make some regulations that restrict the kind of cars that get sold in our state. States' rights, and that completely freaked him out. And he, he hauled the heads of car companies into his office and screamed at them. D- you know, how dare you? And this is the sign of a, of a mad king who's losing his mind. Yeah. Who, who really thought. And, and, you know, when you're just sitting there uh, in front of uh, Chris Eliza uh, with your pants <laughs> off, screaming about, I don't know, what conspiracy, it, conspiracy hornets are buzzing around in his big empty skull. But you're sitting on the crapper. And you decide, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to order American companies not to do business with China. That's what I'm going to do. That is a sign of a of a complete mental collapse. Mm-hmm. There's no way out for the Republican Party at this point. They are real. They are in the bunker with him, and he's and, and we've we said this between ourselves today. He's ordering Army Group Steiner <laughs> around, and there is no army. There is no Army Group Steiner. There is no. He's in the bunker, scream, and nobody will tell him that it's crazy. They're all in the bunker with him. And, you know, if you're still in the bunker with Trump or if you helped him excavate the bumper bunker and put the Republican Party in there and put him in a position to be this mad, you have to be excised from our public life. Mm-hmm. You are the problem. And I mean, people like Joe Walsh, yeah, who, who is now uh, uh, entering into a marketing scam that he's going to take some resources away from Donald Trump by running to the right of Donald Trump. No, Joe Walsh's career is over. There's nothing. It, all he is is a is a third rate radio hack in the northern Chicago suburbs who's desperately trying to find a way to revitalize his shitty career full of shitty opinions that led to Donald Trump. So what is he going to do? You know what? I was wrong. You know, here's the solution. Give me a lot of money and a lot of media and I'll take a whole bunch of support away from Donald Trump. No, you won't. You absolutely won't because you're going to fail and they'll go right back to him even if you succeed. So all you're doing is is finding a way to profit from the shit pile you made of your political party. So you might be fooling a whole bunch of liberals who are much more sanguine about jumping in the foxhole with people who will knife them in the back at the first opportunity, but you're not fooling me. Because I've seen Joe Walsh over the course of his career. He's a despicable human being, and he's going to go to his grave being a despicable human being. I have some breaking news. Um, CNN just hired Andrew McCabe as a contributor, so... That's making Don Jr. really uncomfortable. So I'm happy to see that. All right. Let's do a news roundup. Let's do a news roundup, shall we? That's an excellent idea. While speaking to reporters on Tuesday, President Stupid said that any Jewish person who votes for Democrats shows a, quote, total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty. That's roughly 79% of the American Jewish population. Donald Trump Mm -hmm. just called bad Americans and disloyal to this country. Yeah. Well, they're disloyal to him because they're... Democrats, and that's all yeah. that matters to him. So, yeah. Uh, this week in inevitable Republican stuff, Trump walked back his support for additional background checks and gun legislation after NRA CEO Wayne LaPierre reminded him that the NRA owns his ass. This week in uh, further inevitable Republican stuff, Sarah Huckabee Sanders will join Fox News as a contributor. The economy added 501,000 fewer jobs since 2018 than previously reported. According to a Bureau Labor of Statistics revision, Trump's tax cuts resulted in fewer restaurants, hotels, retailers, and professional business service jobs 
than it initially reported. The U.S. manufacturing uh, sector contracted for the first time since September of 2009. You remember who was president in September of 2009 who got the manufacturing sector back on its feet and saved a million American jobs in the automobile industry, Blue Gown? Mm -hmm. yeah. It was Barack Obama. Sure as hell was. Trump said he's considering ending birthright citizenship in the United States for children of non-citizens and people who came to the U.S. illegally. Uh. And uh, he's going to do that with a Sharpie pen at his desk. And uh, the ACLU said, that's not how this works. That's not no. how any of this works. <laughs> and then he ordered them to stop saying that. Yeah. Because that's going to work. Uh, hereby, speaking, hereby ordered them. I hereby order you. The ACLU. <laughs> I'm sorry. You didn't say Simon Says, so fuck you. <laughs> um, uh, Donald Trump wanted, really did want to award himself a Medal of Honor, but his aides talked him out of it. A Medal of Honor. <sighs> In many people's news, Monday night, a White House official denied that they were considering cutting the payroll tax, telling NBC it's not something under consideration. Trump in the Oval Office the next day. Payroll taxes is something I've been thinking about. <laughs> many people, many people would like to see that. I, I have to, we have to find who the fuck this many people is. Well, and, and this is another and, thing and, that the CNBC host was just mm -hmm. boggled the messaging on the payroll tax from the White House is messed up. Yeah. 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 How the fuck How do you mess, mess up? up? Well, How do you mess up payroll taxes? It's either on or it's not, right? Well, and this is because, as many people have pointed out, including Jay Rosen, we don't have a White House anymore. Right. We have a lunatic in an empty building full of sycophants with no policy controls, no plans for anything, and a fucking phone. And that's it. And And you know what? 40 million Americans love it, mm -hmm. and they are the problem. And that, that consistent, people are, uh, many people, no. Yeah, uh, many people. There was, there was a news outlet uh, pointing out the remarkable stability of Donald Trump's support and showing this line yeah. that's always below, you know, between 42 and 39%, just straight line yeah. across from 2017 on. And it's yep. the same. It's just because it's the same people. It's the people plugged it's, into Fox News twenty four seven who mm -hmm. love this president, so called. It's a it's the political flat line. This is what democracy looks like when it heart when its heart stops. It's this flat line of meatheads who really were unless they are deprived of power, and I'm completely deprived of power. We're going to be having this awful conversation for the next ten years. Because eventually they'll just – because that's when the demography will catch up with the right. We have to have a longer conversation about J.B. Prisker now. He's our governor, and he's a Democrat. He is. He's done so much in the past eight months. Pot's going to be legal in January. He just signed a bill uh, raising the minimum salary for teachers to $40,000. I realize that doesn't sound like a lot. But when you think that it was lower than mm -hmm. that, that's a remarkable thing. Uh, yesterday, he signed a mm -hmm. bill into law that prevents landlords from evicting a tenant based on immigration status. Yes. You would think that would be common sense, but that was not the law in Illinois. Nope. And there are plenty of people who live in our neighborhood who would like that not to be the law. Yes. Would like you to be able to evict somebody for being the wrong color or evict yes, somebody for checking green cards and checking... And and the fact that a man, I think he was in Texas, uh, had all of the paperwork, had a social security card, had a driver's license, had a birth certificate, and was still checked out by the sheriff because the sheriff said, oh, no, no, we're checking the immigration status of everybody <clears throat> who looks like you. Yep. He yeah. left that part off. And they held this guy. The sheriff held this guy because mm -hmm. of the color of his skin. And that's what we have going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so those of you that are blessed to be in blue states and solid blue states, and we had a Republican governor who, in order to destroy unions, made Illinois survive without a budget for two years. Yes. To break, specifically to break the back of the unions. Specifically. Right. To break the back of public sector unions. Mm-hmm. And the Democratic legislature held firm. Wouldn't do and it. I realize mm -hmm. they're corrupt as fuck over there. A they lot are. of them. Mm -hmm. I get that. 
Uh, and, and people complain to me about, well, we don't know about Pritzker and money laundering. We don't know about this. You know, he's, a, he's rich. He's, he's a billionaire. rich. You got to be is. careful. He's rich. He is. He is. He's he is. a billionaire. The last governor was a billionaire. He had to, in order to run against this union buster, you had to have a shitload of money. And that's terrible. And I, I hate that that's our choice. But when you've dealt with Rauner as pre, as governor for with two years and no budget, and the only thing get autism funded in the state is with a court order, mm-hmm. and he cuts back on autism funding on World Autism Day. Yep, not he picking sure did. that up. Mm-hmm. When when you're down that low, and all of a sudden you have a governor who is increasing teacher salaries, and right. And protecting immigrants. And last week he said, fuck you to the Trump administration over Planned Parenthood. And there are other Democratic governors doing that too. But he came out and it was a headline in the paper, J.B. Prisker backs Planned Parenthood. Now that's going to make people's hair on fire down here in Southern Illinois, South Central Illinois, because Planned Parenthood, oh my God, they're Mm -hmm. evil incarnate. And he stood by them. And so this is, this is... I love this guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and he, he has um, uh, uh, he has required Illinois schools to teach LGBT history. Yep. He has uh, he is now making good on the back pay that, that state employees are owed because Rauner just screwed them out of it. Got a contract. Yeah. There's a there's a capital bill. There's a capital bill. There's a capital bill. There, the streets in my town that some of which are state owned there's now an actual chance that they won't actually fall apart, that there will be some infrastructure projects in Springfield that have been overdue for 20 years that will actually get paid for because now we have a capital bill. But here's the thing. Part of sort of acting locally that we want to emphasize is celebrate your victories when you get them. Right. Take a minute. I mean, I understand that Medicare for all is wonderful. I understand that that single payer would be great. Our lives, very specifically, were incredibly um, improved mm-hmm. by the Affordable Care Act. Yep. And the the games the Republicans played with it, the, the shut them off, cut them off, we're going to choke it off, we're going to get rid of it, reduced my wife to tears on occasion, over trying to keep up and keep over track. Over and over. Yeah. Just on the bubble all the time. And is, the, is, the, is it up now? Have they changed? Are, are we going to lose the medication for our children? Are we going to lose our health care coverage? It was that way. Just interminably. Now, having the Affordable Care Act is a grossly imperfect solution to the American problem of health care. It is also a vast improvement over the status quo that it replaced. Well, it would be great if progressive, for... and I mean a real progressive, mm-hmm. you, you will eventually understand that progress is incremental. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Just as fascism is incremental, progress is incremental, yeah. and it will sneak up on you. And all of a sudden, when you're about to lose what you gained, when you when you lose the Voting Rights Act, boy, you notice it. Right. Right. Oh my God, we're losing. When Roe versus Wade is about to be taken right. away from your right. kids, from your from the next right. generation, you notice yep. it, and suddenly it it isn't the worst thing in the world to have a moderately progressive person in office who will put in place stuff that's yeah, pretty good that will protect it, teenagers it drives who me. need to be on the pill so they don't hemorrhage and that governor will protect yes. that teenager this is the this is what i, I it, get into fights with people on twitter and i'm sorry about that but mm-hmm. don't tell a teacher who all of a sudden is going to have forty thousand dollars when they didn't have that yesterday mm-hmm. that really he's not good enough not, it's not pure enough. It's not enough. It's yeah. not pure enough. Well, you know, yeah. you're right. You know, you're right. But you know what? Take five goddamn minutes to celebrate the fact that some progress has been made. And and yeah. no one's saying, and then sit on your laurels and we'll rest on this. And this is the final victory and everything's great. Oh, now, yeah. no one's saying that. Talk but, teachers from now on because they've got their 40 grand minimum wage. No, I'm not saying that. No one is no. saying that. And because if you get into the mindset that only the optimal most left solution is acceptable and everything else is a compromise and a sellout because it doesn't affect you personally because this is, isn't your health care no instinct and was taken away it's not your salary that's being cut if donald trump has proven anything is there is a deep and profound difference between the two parties 
And it's always going to be a horse race. And you're never going to like either horse in the race, but one is better than the other. And I, I'll repeat this. I've read Bernie's plan for Medicare for all. It phases in over four years. You're not right. gonna, it's not Medicare for all now, exclamation point. That There is no plan yeah. to do that. And I like Bernie's plan. I like some of the other plans. I know this is not going to come down from a cloud the minute a Democrat is elected president. God, God. Yeah grant us a democratic senate as well which is going to be a really hard push it it's it's not guaranteed that we're going to get anywhere on health care mm-hmm. in the next 10 years because it's not guaranteed what when you are sworn into office they don't give you the thanos infinity stone glove <laughs> so you can snap and make everything happen this is yeah. what this is this is what killed the obama presidency it yeah. crippled it is this insistence that if only he had the will to do it, and this is a, a complete myth that the Bel- the Beltway media love to repeat, that that somehow Barack Obama had Green Lantern powers, and if he just used them, Mitch McConnell would stop being Mitch McConnell and would turn into Dick Durbin. Yeah. No, he's that's never going to happen. There's no amount of persuasion or money or anything in the world that's ever going to make Mitch McConnell anything other than the scumbag that he is. I hope you guys can hear the frustration in our voices because we it's, really this is a family fight, and we really want. Uh, healthcare for all. Once Medicare mm-hmm. for all is in place, uh, somebody's going to die in a hospital, and Fox mm-hmm. News is going to take that and have a red siren about mm-hmm. see, see. Once you have Medicare see, for all, people die. People die yeah. in the hospital. Kills people. I thought, right. They they promise no one would ever die again, right. and they'll find some asshole. They'll they'll dig up Alan Combs, or they'll find some other hack. They'll they'll get Juan Williams or Donna yeah. Brazil. To say, Inside. well, you know, I, I my yeah. party makes a lot of extravagant and irresponsible uh-huh. promises. And when I was running the place, it blah, blah, blah. And that's what it's going to be like for the rest of your lives. Yeah. So strap um, in. <laughs> yeah. And and celebrate your victories. Yeah. When you get yeah. a modest proposal passed in your local community because you put your sweat into it, have a beer, have a glass of tea, go have, go, go to a movie. Dance in the streets, celebrate your victories because you know what? Victories are few and far between these days. But but 2018 proved that 2016 is not inevitable. Yep. We can rally, we can win. We just have to stop letting Fox News and the Beltway Media define our conversation. The, the conversation we're going to have is not the conversation they want us to have, and that's perfectly. And I okay do with see me. Bernie Sanders and and uh, Elizabeth Warren pushing back on that. Pushing back on those I narrative do. questions. I the do. other thing the two of them did this week, I want to applaud them for this, is uh, they are the two so far, and, and other candidates have been invited to do this. They have returned campaign donations from employees of hedge funds who are squeezing Puerto Rico. Uh, and Good. and there is a call out to all candidates to do that. Uh, the first two who have done it are Warren and Sanders. So good for them. Yeah. Um, Nothing but respect and for that. Nothing they are uh, having a friendly competition. It's very. It's going to be a big yeah. heartbreaker for one of them. One of them is going to win yeah. New Hampshire, and the other one isn't, and that's going to be a heartbreaker. But yeah. Bernie Sanders has said on the campaign trail that Elizabeth Warren is his friend. He likes her ideas, and uh, yeah. you know, someone they're they're really trying to poke him to get him to get mad because right. angry Bernie Sanders is good TV. He is great TV. You know, does it bother you that some other candidates are quote unquote stealing your ideas? And he said, no, I love it. Let's all have my ideas. And this was a really good week for Bernie Sanders. It was. Bernie Sanders yeah. who got to say, and I plan to vote for a Jewish American for president. Yeah, right. right. You know, it was like yeah. it, it, that, right. that slow pitch over right in his sweet spot. And he put it out of the park. Yeah. He did a great job. He so, really did. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of intra fighting going on between candidates on Twitter. Again, I had to remind someone, you know, most voters aren't on Twitter. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stay off of Twitter one day a week and you'll have, you'll have a whole new perspective. Those of you that are on all the time, uh, I take Sundays off and that's good for me. So, well, and when the front runners fight, it's the Seth Moltons that suffer. Oh really man. Heartbreaker. Yeah. I know that just bothered you so much that Seth Moulton, the Moulton Mentum. He was the last, my, I, I had Moulton Mentum. He was the pure one. He was the pure one, Blue Gal, and now he's gone. 
Look, thanks a lot, democracy. Wow. All right. Shall we continue with the uh, news roundup? Uh, Rudy Giuliani says the State Department aided his efforts to pre- uh, press Ukraine on Trump's political opponents. Uh, he pressed for investigations into former Vice President Joe Biden and release of damaging information on Paul, Paul Manafort. So he is saying that he's using the State Department to solicit foreign help to investigate Trump's political enemies. And he's apparently proud of that. <sighs> I did want to note, say one thing about the uh, whole Greenland issue, which is yeah. uh, it got youngest child to start talking about politics. Yes, it did. Which isn't that great? She, she's in a current events class this year, uh-huh. and she has strong opinions about uh, the rights of the people of Greenland, which was wonderful to hear. She she mm-hmm. is someone who does not uh, want to talk politics very often because right. that is her brother's wheelhouse. Right. And uh, she always feels uh, a little insecure doing that. And as a result, has sort of rejected that whole topic. I don't want to talk about politics because Mm -hmm. But now she's in a current events class. And she had some very strong opinions about the rights of the people of Greenland to have their own uh, government and that we can't buy their land from them, their country from them. And I just was very proud of her. The Trump administration has planned to let diseases run rampant through their immigration concentration camps. They're not going to vaccinate migrant families and have no plans to do so ahead of this year's flu season. That's deliberate. That's that's uh, biological warfare being waged against. Well, and and he wants indefinite uh, detention of children. It's he's a monster. They're all monster. It's time for him to go. It's time for him to go. And I hope that the millionaire senators are losing a whole lot of money Mm -hmm. today. I'm sorry about retirees who depend on their investments for retirement. Mm -hmm. And you and I are not (laughs) Depend. I don't know what we depend on for retirement. We're not. Uh, it's this not podcast, our stock This is it. <laughs> to break it to you. I'll be Elizabeth. I'll be uh, the notorious <laughs> RBG, <laughs> ninety four, still podcasting because I can't afford not to. Uh, <laughs> she she had surgery, by the yes. way, to remove a growth uh, on her pancreas. So we are wishing mm-hmm. Ruth Bader Ginsburg well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week, our Internet Kitty is Mr. B, who you may have seen on Twitter. He's that 26-pound chonk who is up for adoption at the Morris Animal Refuge in Philadelphia. And you'd better believe Mr. B eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food, the only cat food they eat, is freshly poured, freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit Mr. B all over Twitter, all over yeah. social media, but you can also visit Mr. B at our Facebook page and website, and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service, go Postal Unions, letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Uh, Drift Class, it is time for another letter show. We need to it start is. planning that because um, we've got some good ones and uh, we would love to hear from you. So write us at our uh, postal address or our email address. And don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is a labor of love and our job and our retirement. (laughs) Yeah. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are relieved that catnip supplies will remain unaffected by President Stupid's stupid trade war. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018.